the entity relationship diagram we've just created is a more or less conceptual representation of data. Uh, at this point, we haven't really done anything to commit ourselves to a particular way of storing that data. We haven't committed to putting it in a so-called relational database, which is the chief focus of this course. We could store it in a variety of ways right now. We could put it in so-called XML files. If you don't know what those are, you don't need to worry about it at the moment. Uh, and a variety of other ways that we could potentially persist the data or you know, make it live on disk somewhere. But we've decided in this course that we're going to pursue uh, relational databases. Relational just means stores things in tables. So we're going to take these concepts that we had developed in our entity relationship diagram, these conceptual entities and relationships, and we're going to need to embody them in tables in some fashion. There's a set of translation rules for doing so, uh, to take an entity relationship diagram and turn it into a set of tables designs. I'm not going to go through those right now. We'll, of course, uh, review them in some detail during the appropriate week of the course, but I'll just give you a quick preview of what that might look like. So you see I have this book entity, borrows relationship, friend entity, and some description around each of those, etc. When I follow translation rules, I'm going to end up with, not terribly surprisingly, three tables. A quick review of this notation. We start with the name of a table. We open a set of parentheses. Inside the parentheses, we do a list of columns in the table, separated by commas, and as you might expect, the unique identifier for the table. When we get to this point, the unique identifier ends up being called a primary key. We'll cover that more uh, you know, during the appropriate week. That is listed first, and it is underlined in the same way that it's underlined in any relationship diagram. So we'll look back, and the, the rules very roughly are, if you have an entity, it becomes a table, and all of its attributes become attributes or columns of that table. So book and friend seem pretty straightforward. You guys can see ISBN title and cover for book. Look, it's become a table called book with ISBN title and cover. The same for friend. We have friend ID as the identifier, first name, last name, and email. Lo and behold, it's become a table called friend, friend ID, first name, last name, and email. But what's happening with borrows? Borrows is a somewhat more interesting case because relationships uh, get translated into tables depending on their so-called cardinality. Again, cardinality refers to how many things on one side there are for any given instance on the other side, how many books there are per friend. In this case, there are many books per friend. And similarly, there can be many friends per book uh, based on the business rules we've described. So cardinality is actually the main determinant in telling us whether something like a relationship like borrows would become its own table or if it would get kind of folded over into one of these other tables. Again, we'll talk more about that in uh, coming weeks. But the general rule of thumb is, well, it's a, an ironclad rule, I should say, anytime you have a so-called many-to-many relationships, such as there can be many books per any given friend, there can be many friends for any given book, a many-to-many, -many, M and N, that relationship becomes its own table. And what you put in the table are obviously the attributes of the relationship itself and the identifiers of the two things that it's connecting. So when I create a table for my borrower's relationship, I'm going to suck in the entity identifier for book, ISBN, and I'm also going to suck in the entity identifier for fr uh, friend, which is friend ID, and I'm going to pull that together into a table with start date and end date. Again, the point of borrows is to kind of show a connection between these two things. So it sort of makes sense that I'd pull in something that would indicate a book, and indicate a friend, and then store the, like, the conjunction of those two things along with any attributes such as start and end date that are specific to that conjunction as opposed to the entity's friend and book that are being connected. So I go back here and I see that in the borrows table I've created, there is something that represents friends, something that represents a book, along with start date and end date. You see arrows here pointing out. Uh, these are going to be implemented in a database, something called foreign keys. It's basically a pointer in one table that says, hey, see this column here? It basically is referencing a column in another table. This book here means I am pointing to the ISBN and the book table 
and thereby indicating a specific book. That's how I can store information about what friends have borrowed what book without repeating all the information for the friend and for the book in the borrows table. Instead of repeating the first name, last name, email, etc., all the information that's germane to friend, I just put a reference, a so-called foreign key, in the borrows table that points to the friend I'm talking about for a particular row. Likewise, I put in a reference that points to the book I'm talking about for a particular row. And then I put in any descriptive information, in this case start and end date, that covers that conjunction. So now we've gone from this conceptual set of you know, entities and relationships, this entity relationship diagram, to a specification for creating tables in a relational database. And again, you know, the idea that we would pull in columns that represent friend and book and that those would be so-called foreign keys that would point over to the book table, the friend table, is uh, something specific to so-called relational databases, which are the focus of this course. When, a little bit further on, I'm going to show you entering, creating the tables and entering data into them, and the idea of these connections will probably become a little bit more concrete to you at that point.